But like proportionate to his body? Like was he kind of a petite no, guy? That's or? Hello. Welcome back to another vlog. It's super chaotic in my apartment right now. I have so many things going on and it's a freaking mess in here. And honestly, I wasn't even planning on vlogging today. I just got home from hanging out with a friend. It's already 7 p.m. But I came in here and I was like, I, I need to get shit done. And I felt like if I pulled out the camera and I started vlogging, I'd be more likely to actually do what I need to get done because I feel like I have something holding me accountable, you know? I feel like I haven't vlogged in a while. I was on a good streak of just like weekly vlogging, recording practically every day. And then I just started becoming more social and I wasn't home as much. And I've just been like living in the moment. So, which, I mean, it's a good thing, but I do miss vlogging. So yesterday, my friend Julia and I recorded the second episode of our podcast. So if you haven't been listening to it and you're not following us, I'll have all the information in the description. Um, we started a podcast recently called Girls Who Get It Podcast. It's on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We are planning on talking about a whole bunch of different like relatable topics. But the second episode that we recorded yesterday, it's pretty raunchy. We were talking about our worst sexual experiences and then also sharing some of your stories that people had sent in to us on Instagram. And it's a really good episode. So I spent most of the afternoon editing that and just now I was playing it back, listening to it, making sure that everything sounds good. And I'm also running my Nespresso through a cleaning cycle because the light was flashing that needs to be cleaned. So we're doing that. I just made some popcorn shrimp because, oh yeah, I had some the other day at a restaurant and it was so good and I've just been craving it ever since. So just got that from the grocery store. I ran the dishwasher last night so I have a bunch of clean dishes in there that I need to put away. I have some dirty dishes in the sink from earlier that need to go in the dishwasher. Benny has his toys all over the floor in here so that needs to be picked up. And then I did a whole bunch of laundry a few days ago and it ended up getting really late and I was too tired and just didn't get around to putting that stuff away. So it's just laying all over the place. We need to put that away. And then I also was just out. I met up with one of my friends down here, Rachel, who is a hairstylist that's also from Pennsylvania. I met her through Instagram when I was down here apartment hunting a few months ago. We met up for lunch today and then we were right by H&M and Ulta. So we did some shopping. Oh my God, this bag is so heavy. So I have to put that stuff away and I'll do a haul and show you what I got because I'm so excited. I got some really cute stuff. Now let me show you the stuff that I got tonight. I need some more dry shampoo. So I got the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe texturizing dry shampoo. This is my absolute favorite. It just smells so good and it works so well. And then I needed more setting spray, which I was using the Morphe Continuous Mist, but my friend Rachel that I was out with, she does wedding makeup and she said that she really likes this a lot on her brides. It makes the makeup last all day and it just, like erases your pores, makes the makeup look really flawless. And I tested out the tester and I loved the mist of it. So I was like, okay, I need to try that. I also needed some more brow stuff. And I saw this brow micro filling pen from Benefit. So it creates three different strokes and it kind of gives like a microblading type of look. I I'm not into like super filled in brows lately. And I feel like the pencil that I was using, it was hard for me to make them look fuller without them being like too filled in. 
So I'm hoping that I will like this and that it'll give me a more natural effect. And then I also got the Gimme Brow Brow Gel, which I really like. And especially on the days where I'm not wearing any makeup or I'm going for like a really light natural kind of makeup look, I love just running a little bit of brow gel through my brows. I've been wanting to try the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I've been hearing good things about this for years and years, so got that. And then the last thing I got was a makeup brush. This is the Morphe M6 Buffing Brush for my foundation. I'm excited for the next time that I do my makeup. I've just been doing my makeup the exact same way pretty much every time using the exact same products, and I'm just starting to get kind of tired of it, and I'm not loving the way it's been looking as much. And then from H&M, there was a couple things that I had been wanting. Number one was a leather jacket. I had a leather jacket for years and years that I wore to death, and I recently had to get rid of it because it was just looking so worn down and beat up. So I wanted to replace that. So I got this one. And I think the one I had before was from H&M too. Just nice and simple. Just kind of like edges up an outfit a little bit. And then I also really wanted some combat boots. I used to have some years ago and then I must have got rid of them at some point. I do that a lot. I will go through these phases where I just go crazy. Like I hate clutter and especially when my closet is very cluttered and filled with stuff. So I'll just go through and if it's something that I haven't worn in like a couple of months, I just toss it and I donate it. I'm trying to not be that way. Like I don't want to be a hoarder with my stuff. But I need to find like a happy in between because then I will get rid of things and then regret it. And then I'm like, I end up having to then repurchase it. So anyway, I've been wanting some combat boots lately. I know this lighting sucks, so sorry, but they're just plain black combat boots. This was one of those items that I was like, oh, it's meant to be. I can't leave the store without these because I had saw these online, loved them. And then I found them in the store and they only had one pair in the entire store. And they were a size six, which normally I'm like a six and a half or a seven. So I wasn't sure if they were gonna fit. They fit perfectly. Like I even have a little extra wiggle room for my toes. So I was like, how can I pass them up? You know, like they, they're here for me. Then I also got these little slip on heels. I have shoes that are kind of similar to this in nude. And I absolutely love them and I wear them so much. And I had been wanting similar ones in black so that I had more options. Um, and I saw these and tried them on and they're so comfortable. And the heel is like nice and low so that you still feel like you're wearing heels and you st it still gives you a little bit of height but they're comfortable and easy to walk in. And this part up top is just so padded and it just so comfortable, so cushioned. And then I got two cute dresses. I'm so excited. Oh, like being down here and the fact that it's warm for longer than it is up in Pennsylvania, I feel like I can take advantage of like wearing dresses and summer clothes more now that I'm down here. And there's just like more to do, more places to go out, more like festivals and just things happening in the summertime. So I've really been excited about just getting more like summer pieces and like cute dresses and stuff like that. I saw this little simple dress that like just goes up like this. And this color is just so cute. And I thought in the summertime when I have a tan, oh, so good. And then the last thing that I got is this lime green dress. And it was on sale too. This was only $10.99. It's beautiful. I love the square neck. I have been finding that square necks, I think, are just like on me so flattering. I love a square neck with just like little skinny straps lately. It's like a midi dress. It goes like halfway down to my calves. I don't know if you can see. It's like one of those perfect things that you could dress up or down. Like I could definitely see this in the summertime just during the day wearing it with some sandals or some sneakers. Also could do a denim jacket or something 
or I could wear it at night with maybe like these heels or something, throw the leather jacket on top, and then it could be a really cute like night out dress as well. I feel like before I moved down here, when I was still living in my hometown, like it, it was such a small town and there wasn't really much to do. And the few bars and stuff in the area were like not the nicest. So you felt really silly like getting too dressed up and anywhere that I went it was like all just people that I knew so I don't know I wasn't like as excited I didn't have as much of a reason to like get dressed up. I will try my hardest to find links to everything that I showed you but especially with the clothes sometimes it's a little bit tricky especially with the sales stuff. I'm gonna put that stuff away and um, just wash my face and get ready for bed. Now it's like yeah it's almost nine o'clock now so hello it's the next night the reason i have you all the way up there is because i just got out of the shower and i'm about to get naked i want to do some self tanner i haven't done this in a really long time i don't know something about having like a little extra color on my skin and like looking a little more bronzed by the way i'm running the dryer so sorry if that's loud but um i don't know it just makes me it like puts my mind in summer mode you know it like tricks me into thinking that it's summer and that it's not cold out and also i've been having a really hard time matching my foundations lately and i really don't want to have to buy a lighter shade so i figure i have this already i'll just do a layer or two of this so i was just in the shower i did like a full body exfoliation i shaved all that good stuff now i'm going to do my typical like body care routine first so i thought i would share the products that i've been using because i've had a pretty good skincare routine with my face for a while now but when it comes to my body i've just been lazy like i will hop out of the shower sometimes i would put lotion most of the time i wouldn't but the last couple of months i have had like a full body care routine and my skin has never felt so soft first thing that i'm gonna do is apply this serum i got this I'm, i'll try to find a link to it online but i got this at the place where i go for my brazilian waxes i always get ingrown hairs especially down there and it drives me nuts and i exfoliate and i try to do everything i'm supposed to and nothing was helping so the girl who does my waxes recommended this to me and literally just after using it for like two days i noticed a dramatic difference and i've been using it for a couple weeks now i just can't live without it now so it's literally a roll-on and i just roll it right onto my skin and it's like a chemical exfoliator but it's gentle enough that you can use it every single day so I just use it every day when I get out of the shower and then once I'm in the shower I gently exfoliate that area and it just removes like the top layer of dry dead skin and that way if there are any ingrowns they just like pop right out and don't get like really deep and stuck and I feel like it's just made the skin like visibly a lot more clear like I would see pictures of these girls and they're like little teeny tiny bikini bottoms that were just showing like so much and i would look at them and be like are they face tuning their vagina or is it really like that smooth and flawless because i can't relate but i feel like now it's starting to starting to look like that the next thing that i'm going to apply i also got from the place where i get my waxes i don't even know how to pronounce the name of it but it's an oil it says it's a plant-based retinol alternative it's supposed to help with skin elasticity and prevent the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and it's meant for your face but you can obviously use it on your body too again the girl who does my waxes was telling me that she's been using this for the last few months on her body she has a baby and she said she had just some areas on her body like especially around her boobs where the skin just like wasn't as tight and it was kind of sagging and she had some like cellulite and stuff like that and she uses this every day and it's been tightening up her skin and i was like mm, that sounds a little bit too good to be true but i'll give it a try let me tell you it actually works so again i'll try to find a link to that and i'll put it in the description but i have been using it on my upper arms it's just an area of my body that i have felt so self-conscious about and especially within like the last couple of years from like weight fluctuation and stuff i just have noticed that like this part of my arm just 
like I don't know it has a lot of cellulite and like the skin just looks like kind of flabby and it's not even just like from fat necessarily I feel like it really is just the skin in that area is not as tight but from using that oil every day for the last couple of weeks I honestly have been noticing a difference so just apply this to that area and then whatever's left over just kind of rub it on my chest and neck area then the next thing I do is Nivea cream so I've been applying this to my scars because I got a breast lift last year and I have a scar around my areola still kind of in the process of healing so I like to use this to like really soften the scar and then I like massage it in a little bit to help it along the healing process and then the last thing that I apply is the Palmer's cocoa butter and I literally just rub it all over my entire body I waited a few minutes for um, the lotion and everything to absorb in my skin because I want to make sure that the tan goes on evenly I don't want it to be streaky obviously in order to get like the best most even most natural looking tan you want to do this on like nice perfectly prepped skin so i'm using the bondi sands dark tanning foam and i have their tanning mitt as well so i'm just going to pump this out and this one does have a color guard meaning when you apply it it has color so you can see where you're putting it and it has to sit for a little while and then you rinse the color guard off and then your skin underneath that should be nice and tan but it's nice that it has that color guard so that you can really make sure that you're rubbing it in evenly and it's not going to be all streaky and make sure when you're going over like your elbows and your knees that you're bending so that you're not like missing any spots and like the crevice of your elbow and I try to rub it in as best as I can and just do one layer at a time and if I feel like it doesn't look dark enough I will wait for it to process rinse the color guard layer off and then do a second tan rather than like doing multiple layers at one time because I feel like I don't know it sometimes it just doesn't fully dry or it can come out you know a little streaky and to do my back just take a good old spatula put it in the mitt and then <laughs> I'm taking a rubber band to secure it single lady hacks and then I always do my hands last and I don't even pump any more product onto the mitt. I just take whatever is left over and just rub that on my hands. Make sure I'm like getting my knuckles really well in between the fingers and trying to not get it on to my palms very much. I hate when you see people that have like the self tan hands. And it's just like really obvious and really uneven. I mean, I've been there. It's, it's happened to me plenty of times. And I mean, it still happens sometimes, but I feel like just rubbing like the leftover product helps a lot. And then I'll do the same thing with my face, like whatever's left over, because I don't want my face to get super dark and make sure that I am getting like the back of my neck around my face up into my hairline and even on my ears make sure you're getting like around your nose and all that so here's how it looks after applying it but i already like i was just looking in the mirror while i was getting dressed and i was like oh, it just this feeling came over me like you know when you spent the entire day at the beach or by the pool in the summertime and you come in and you just like got a lot of sun and you're like super tan. I got that feeling and it just felt so good. 
so it's like i'm telling you it just it's not even for me about like how it makes me look necessarily it's just like what it does to my mind and how it makes me feel but i'm gonna go to bed soon and if you're wondering yes i have all white sheets and this will probably rub off a little bit on the sheets and stain them but i was planning on washing them tomorrow anyway so that's why i figured this was kind of perfect timing so this one in particular says that you can wash it after one hour but for a longer lasting darker tan leave it on for up to six hours i usually will just do this right before bed that way i can leave it on overnight and i just rinse it off in the morning and I'll see once I rinse it off how I like the look of it and then if I want it a little bit darker I'll do a second application. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning I didn't wash off the color guard of my tan yet But I'll hop in the shower a little bit later and then I'll show you how it looks. It just got up a little while ago I uploaded the second episode of my podcast and then I took Benny out for a walk. And now I'm ready to have some breakfast. And actually, we have a sponsor for this vlog. Shout out to Magic Spoon. Thank you so much to them for working with me and sponsoring this portion of the vlog. So if you've never heard of Magic Spoon before, they make cereal for adults. So it's very nostalgic, reminiscent of cereal that you ate growing up as a kid but it's better for you magic spoon cereals have zero grams of sugar 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net grams of carbs in each serving they're also only 140 calories per serving they are keto friendly gluten free grain free soy free and low carb you guys know me i try to prioritize my health and live a healthier lifestyle but like every so often you know you just get a craving for something sweet, something like not super healthy. So it's great that now I have this as an option. So if I am having a craving like that, I can just eat some Magic Spoon cereal and not have to feel guilty about it. So I have a few flavors here. I have the peanut butter, frosted, cocoa, and fruity. And I also love their packaging, like how cute. I'm gonna have the peanut butter this morning because I love peanut butter. What I love about this is that it actually is tasty too. Like it reminds me of just regular cereal. I've tried other like healthier cereal options and they've all been so bland and it just doesn't like satisfy that craving, you know? So if you guys want to try out Magic Spoon, click the link in my description to try out a variety pack. And be sure to use my promo code SAMVEY for $5 off your order. Or you can go to magicspoon.com slash Sam Vey. And Magic Spoon is backed by a 100% guarantee, so if you don't like it for whatever reason, you can send it back and get a full refund, no questions asked. Thank you so much Magic Spoon for sponsoring this portion of the vlog. I'm gonna finish eating this, and then I wanna chat and catch up with you guys, because I feel like my last few videos were kind of like pre-recorded, and I feel like we're a little bit out of touch. Like the things that you've been seeing have happened like weeks ago now. So I'll show you in a bit. I just rinsed off in the shower, so this is how the tan looks. I am not gonna do a second layer of this. This is perfect. So I wanted to update on what's been going on with dating because a few videos ago I posted to get ready with me and I was telling you guys how I was getting ready to go on a first date. And I've been getting so many comments and DMs asking, how did it go? Now that I have my podcast, ooh, I'll put this down a little bit. And now that I have my podcast and I've been sharing some of my <laughs> experiences, a lot of people are like, oh my God, is the guy that you went on the date with in the video, the guy that you were talking about on the podcast. So I've been down here now for like two and a half months. Um, and I did get one comment that was like, oh, this is too soon. Um, first of all, it's my life and if I feel ready to start going on dates, that's literally my decision. Like I, I don't live my life based on other people's interpretation or opinion of what I should or shouldn't do. I'm the only one who knows the details of my own life and my own situation. So if I feel ready, that's my own business. Like I just share it because I know that you guys find it relatable and like it's fun to talk about this kind of stuff, but like, Anyway, so yeah, like a month or so ago, I got on the apps, not even really intending to meet anybody, but I was just 
bored and kind of curious. I just wanted to kind of see what guys are here. And I did end up matching with a few people and there were a few people that I actually met up with in person. I think only three, yeah, I think only three people that I actually met in person and like went on dates with. And the guy that I had went out with when I filmed that guy ready with me video, he was super, super sweet. We only went on that one date though. He was trying to see me more, but I could just tell that he wasn't going to be, like he wasn't what I was looking for in a serious partner because there were just like certain things that I was like, oh no, like I know that's gonna be a problem in the long run. And by the way, I, I'm enjoying going on dates, but I'm not in any rush or necessarily looking to jump into a serious relationship. I would like to have at least one full year of being single, especially being in a new town. I want to have a full year of being here and just getting to like meet a bunch of people and have new experiences without getting like tied down into a relationship already. But I think that you can like casually date and meet people and like go out for dinner and drinks, but like still want to be single and still enjoy being single and still be independent. But I also feel like if I can tell that somebody is like interested in me and is looking for something serious, but I am not feeling it with them, then I'm not going to continue seeing them because I don't want to string them along or give them the wrong idea. Every time I do start talking to somebody, I'm very upfront and clear about all of that um, and what I'm looking for and you know, like what my intentions are. And I think that that's the most important thing. Like who cares? Like do what you want. If you're just looking for casual hookups, fine. If you're looking for a serious relationship, fine. If you're like me and you're looking for something kind of in between or you're not really sure, fine. But I think as long as you're communicating that with the other person and you're both agreeing that you're on the same page, like if you're looking for something casual, but the other person is looking for something serious, then why, like don't even bother pursuing that or meeting up with them, you know, because that's just most likely not going to end well. And then there was another guy that I went on a date with after that, and he was the one that I talked about in the first episode of our podcast that was just like weird and was like texting me inconsistently and was like very unclear about what his intentions were or what he wanted. We hung out two times haven't seen him since the second time. He would like text me out of the blue, but like not really start a conversation or like try to make plans. Like he would just text me sharing information with me. Like, oh, I went out with my friends last night. Okay, uh, did, did you have fun? Like, I, I don't, weird. So I was like, all right, this isn't really going anywhere. And like, I, I, I felt like I was kind of pulling teeth to continue a conversation but then like he would still keep reaching out to me so i was like are you interested or are you not because if you're not that's fine but like why do you still keep reaching out to me and if you want to see me more then like see me i never responded to the last thing he texted me haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks now i think and then there's one guy that i have been texting with that is <laughs> actually from my hometown like, really? I moved all the way down here, 10 hours away, just to meet somebody from my fucking hometown. Um, but we haven't hung out in person yet. I mean, we'll probably hang out at some point. We both, he like runs his own business too, so we both are just like always busy and it's like every time he texts me and wants to hang out, I'm busy doing stuff and vice versa. So one of these days, the timing will work out and we'll finally, the hangout in person but like I said I'm really not looking for anything serious and I don't know I'm just trying to like enjoy my life and have fun and I've been making a lot of girlfriends down here and it's just been really fun to go and hang out with them you know like just making new friends having a new group of people to hang out with on a regular basis like that's been my main focus I, and I would rather go hang out with my friends and have a girls night then go meet up with some guy. Like that's where I'm at right now. Like I just, I, I just don't really care. The like, guys are not holding my interest right now. Oh, and there was one guy that I hung out with a couple of times <laughs> and I talked about him in the second episode of our podcast, but I am very careful um, and I try to be really smart about it. Like when I am gonna meet up with somebody, 
I make sure that it's in a public place. I meet them. I do not give them my address. I don't have them come pick me up. Um, I don't go to their place. And I always have my location shared with my family and my closest friends. I just try to be smart about it and as careful as possible. That's where we're at. That's the update. I probably won't really share much more about dating and all of that in my videos, but if you guys are curious and you want the tea, go follow my podcast, listen to that, because I'll be sharing everything on there. <laughs> You're so handsome. How'd you get so handsome? Oh, yes, thank you. That's very nice. I wasn't planning on like actually getting ready ready, but I've just been dying. Ever since I got these new products the other day, I have been dying to try them out. And I know that I am going out Saturday night with some friends and I wanna use these new products and like try out a new routine, but I want to test it out today since I'm not going anywhere important just so I can make sure that like everything works together because I hate when you're using a new product or just like doing something a little bit different and it's not looking right and then you're rushing and running out of time and it can get stressful so I figured um, I could play around with it today take some Instagram pictures first I am going to prep my skin that's one thing that I've learned about makeup is prepping your skin first and having like a nice kind of like what I was talking about last night with the self tanner like having a nice prepped smooth hydrated base makes all the difference and then I'm gonna mix the Ole Henriksen banana bright face primer I haven't used this in a while I used to be obsessed with this stuff and a little bit of the super goop glow screen to give me a little SPF but also a nice glow both of these are like nice glowy products I'm just mixing that up on the back of my hand on like a no makeup day this alone is just like so beautiful I used to wear these a lot I don't know why I stopped look how glowy bust out the new brush it's nice and dense should give nice full coverage and then the foundation I'm wearing is the NARS sheer glow in the shade Valencia should be a good match yeah it's like perfect I love this foundation why did I ever stop wearing it it gives the most beautiful finish now NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is in the shade Custard, which hopefully isn't too light for this foundation. Looking good so far. Then I'm going to do some cream contour blush and highlight. So I'm using the Fenty cream bronzer in the shade Teddy. I'm taking this angled foundation brush. I'm going to just take a little bit of it and then kind of like tap it out on the back of my hand so that I don't get too much product. A little bit down the sides of my nose. And then I'm taking the Fenty Cream Blush in the shade Daiquiri Dip. I don't know why, like I love the look of cream products so much, but I feel like it just can take more work to blend it out and you have to be more careful with it. So I feel like I just get lazy and just end up doing powders because it's just so much faster this just broke I have this like little baby benefit what's up highlighter I'm taking a small brush tapping it out on the back of my hand and then I'm going to take derma blend translucent powder I'm just gonna set right under my eyes 
I think that's it for the skin. So now I'm going to set it with my new setting spray, the Professional Super Setter from Benefit. It goes on like so light. Okay, next we're gonna do brows. So this is the Brow Micro Filling Pencil from Benefit. So you see how it has the three little tips. Oh, it actually goes on like very natural. I was a little bit scared that it was gonna be super harsh like a marker. But, I mean, you can see, right, the difference between this brow and this one. Because it is not just like a wax pencil, I wonder how quickly it will dry out. That's always my concern with anything that's like a felt tip situation. And now I'm going to put a little brow gel, gimme brow. This I've already used for quite a while, so I already know that I like it. If you want like the super spiky laminated brow look, just get this got to be hair gel. This is nice because it just adds a little bit of color and just kind of like tames them a little bit. Next, I'm just gonna take this champagne colored pencil. Just pop a little bit of that in the waterline. By the way, if you saw my last vlog and I was talking about how he'll go in his crate voluntarily, I'm telling you, I didn't tell him to go in there. He could be on my bed right now. He could be on the couch. He just likes it in there. I don't really like doing much with my eyes lately as far as like eyeshadow. So I'm just taking some Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer and I'm just going to put that in the crease with a fluffy brush just to add some dimension to my eyes. And then some mascara. Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Liner, and then some Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Reef. So glowy. I just recorded an Instagram reel, so I put on my little orange dress that I just got from H&M. Oh my god, with the tan! This is making me so excited for summer. But yeah, I think I'm going to actually wrap up this vlog here so that way I can edit it and get it up as soon as possible because like I said, I feel like my last few videos, I didn't end up posting them until like a week or two after I filmed them and it just felt like we were very out of sync. So I want this to be nice and current. I will continue vlogging the rest of the week and next week, so more vlogs to come. Don't forget to check the description to links to everything, Magic Spoon, my podcast, stuff that I showed you. I will try to link as much as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you really soon in my next video. Bye.